welcome back everyone. I wanted to uh, give you guys a quick update on some news that I saw in regards to Poland repatriating uh, a lot of gold, over 100 tons or approximately 100 tons, and talk about what that means for the overall global economy, as well as the economy in the United States and uh, your personal wealth and what could happen in the near term with our economy, uh, with essentially a financial crisis or recession coming. But before I get into that, I just wanted to wish everybody a very safe and happy Thanksgiving since it, we are right on the cusp of Thanksgiving. I just wanted to say that, um, you know, we always think about being thankful on Thanksgiving and around the holidays, but, you know, it, it's really something that we should always keep at the top of our minds that. We have so many things in life to be thankful for, and you know all the things that that go wrong in our life often, you know, take our attention. But we have so many things to be thankful for: the the people um, in our lives, the you know the the relationships we have, the jobs we have, uh, and all the wealth we have in its different forms. And there's so many things that we really are just blessed to have. You think about all the, the modern conveniences of today's society. It's just it, we are so fortunate. So uh, always try to remember that. Always try to be thankful for the things that you have in life. I know it's easy to focus on the things that are going wrong, but you know I heard a great saying. Uh, I think in a video I watched, or maybe I read it somewhere, and it went something like this: You know, what if tomorrow when you woke up, the only things that existed were the things that you were thankful for today. And that was really deep. So uh, definitely a good thing to keep in mind. Um, but anyway, I wish you guys a very safe and, and happy Thanksgiving with your friends and family. Hope you guys really enjoyed that. So with that, let's get right into um, the story that I want to tell you about. Uh, just came uh, across the, uh, the news wire yesterday. Um, <clears throat> Poland uh, has joined a num number of other countries in repatriating uh, a lot of the gold that they have had stored, in this case, at the Bank of England. Now, if you don't know what repatriation means or you know what it's all about, essentially, a lot of countries, Poland being one of them, um, they'll store their gold in other countries. Part of that is for security. Um, part of that, you know, is just because they want to diversify the locations, um, you know, where they have it stored. But in times of a financial worry, uh, you know, with global contagion, uh, global economic worries, or even uh, local in, in terms of uh, national uh, concerns, co countries will often, well, not necessarily often, it hasn't happened a, a lot historically, but especially in the past couple of years, it has happened with a number of countries. They'll take some of their gold back. They want that back. And when that happens, it kind of signals that the country that's repatriating or taking their gold back to their home country is concerned about uh, geopolitical, global economic issues. And they, they're worried about potentially, you know, whether or not their gold is still going to be there when they need it. Um, they're worried about what might happen with it and they want it close to home. Whenever you get, you know, it, it's easy to, you know, loan things out to other people uh, when in, in, in good times and store maybe your valuables in a uh, bank safety de deposit box. But when things get a little hairy, when things start to go wrong, you often want those back because you want those close, close at hand in case things go wrong and you need them. And that's what Poland has done. Uh, here they've they've taken back uh, a bunch of their gold, about a hundred tons of it, and just uh, just a week or two ago they had also bought a ton of gold um, to add to their nation's reserves. So uh, they other countries like uh, Hungary and Russia have been doing the same thing, but um, you know the the Polish uh, president is you know he. He, he, he's saying, hey, this, you know, this shows the strength of our, 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 of our country. Um, and, you know, they, they've indicated, you know, if they wanted to, they could just sell, sell their, their gold at a pretty, good, uh, a pretty good profit if they wanted to, but they don't plan on doing that. Um, here's another article on uh, Kitco where they also cover the same story. Um, you know, and it's pretty, when the, these stories come up, it makes everybody kind of question, you know, wh what's the thought process these countries are going through when they actually do this repatriation. Um, you know, they, th this article on Kitco mentions the fact that central banks have been buying gold at kind of a record pace the, the past couple of years, especially the past year or so. 
Um, you know, which leads a lot of people to wonder, you know, what's what's the meaning behind this? What what is actually going to happen on the on the global scale in terms of the uh, global economy and individual uh, nations, their economies? And <clears throat> we've got a similar article on Bullion and Star. They they also covered this. Um, Hungary is Hungary, Serbia, Russia. They they've been some countries that have been doing the same type of thing, upping their their uh, gold reserves, and also doing some repatriation. So this is a uh, you know from from my standpoint uh, overall on these um, you know when you see these articles, it always makes me wonder. Okay, well, w what's going on? How can I how how's the economy and potentially what's around the corner? How's that going to affect me and my family? And what can I do about it? Now I've been uh, an investor in gold for a long time, and I think the the word investor. Is sometimes confused a little bit. I don't hold gold, and most investors don't hold gold in order to turn a profit, in order to sell it for uh, a gain of some kind. Usually, people hold gold as basically a hedge against economic chaos when things go wrong, and and that's one of the reasons I have it. I keep a, a small percentage of my overall total investment portfolio in precious metals, particularly gold. I keep some of it in silver as well. But uh, I know that gold has had a long history of being, uh, you know, basically a secure store of wealth. And it's been trusted for thousands of years for doing that. And, it, you know, it's sort of a hedge against uh, complete economic breakdown. Sometimes countries, you know, we basically every country in the world right now has what are called fiat currencies. These are currencies that are basically fake um, Robert Kiyosaki calls the U.S. dollar fake money, and it certainly is. Fiat money is fake money because we just kind of print it up, and it's not really backed by gold like it used to be. Um, and, and no, no country right now is on the gold standard, but countries around the world stockpile gold is basically an asset of last reserve, meaning when everything else goes to hell, if they print too much money or if uh, you know something goes wrong in the economy, the gold that they have serves as you know a way for them to essentially reboot their economy, to rebuild their currency uh, and base it on a new gold standard if necessary. But that gold has real long-term value. And, um, and, and I always look at it when when uh, central governments store gold and they understand its value and you know private banks store gold like J JP Morgan Chase or you know Goldman Sachs companies like that when they buy gold they buy silver they buy those precious metals there's a reason they do that and gold uh, gold and silver really aren't talked about a whole lot in the news the, the you know if you if you listen to or watch the the news networks uh, financial news networks like CNBC or Fox Business they, they rarely get mentioned um, it, it, on a regular basis, but when things start to go bad, when the, when the economy looks like it's going into a recession, when the stock market falls, then they'll start talking about gold. And that's usually the wrong time to look at buying gold because when they talk about it, gold is going up in terms of dollar price. And you know it's usually better to get into gold, to get into silver and precious metals when when they're not being talked about because that usually means the price is lower than than they are in in times that are scary um, when the economy it goes into recession or the stock market crashes or uh, corrects that that gets to be a little scary for investors and and typically that's the time that's the point where investors will run to gold run to silver to protect themselves and <clears throat> And that, and that's a, in my opinion, that's a wise choice. But it's always the early birds, the people that got in before, that really got it at a uh, less expensive or cheaper price than than what you end up buying it at uh, when things are kind of crazy in the market. So that you know, this is something I I look at and I go, okay, with all the news that's out there with uh, you know potential recession risk, and it's really globally. Uh, a lot of countries are worried about this. We have a lot of issues that that we all face, all, all the individual countries out there. We have record high levels of debt at the government levels, at the corporate levels, at the individual household levels. And, you know, we've got a lot of signs that the economy is slowing down. There's a risk of a recession with a lot of assets like stock prices being um, hot, you know, at all-time records, record highs. And in, in the U.S., we've had the longest... 
uh, bull market in U.S. history, and, and bull market just means you know good times when when things look like they're going strong. So everybody is basically looking at okay, when is the next recession? When's the next financial crisis going to hit? And it's in times like that that um, that I think having precious metals in your total investment portfolio is extremely important. Um, I have long. Uh, in you know, for a long time, I've invested in gold and silver, silver because they do provide that hedge against economic crises, and I think it's I, I think it's wise for everyone to consider uh, keeping some of their investments in precious metals, particularly gold. Silver's at a really good price, though. The silver to uh, gold ratio, the price ratio is at a really good point right now. So silver's a very very good investment, uh, in my opinion. I invest in both. Um, but again, as I said, gold has, you know, it, it is the gold standard for a reason. That's what uh, countries primarily stockpile is the gold. Um, if you want to get in, you know, start investing in precious metals uh, to preserve, you know, some of your and your family's wealth, um, there are multiple ways to do it. And I've got other videos that I'll, I'll cover how to do that. But they're basically just a couple of ways. One, you can buy the physical bars or coins, and you don't need to buy a huge bar of gold. You can get a, a coin, uh, a gold coin that's very small. Uh, Canadian gold maples come in denominations that are very small, down to one twentieth of an ounce, so really small, um, small fractions of an ounce. And obviously, you can get full ounce coins as well. And they make bars in uh, multiple sizes, all the way from you know a couple grams all the way up to um, uh, several ounces. So you have a, a bunch of different options if you want to get physical bullion. Uh, it's called the coins and the bars. Uh, a number of different reputable dealers you can buy those from. I'll do some reviews on different places that I've used in the past. Uh, mostly what I do now today is I, I don't buy physical bullion. I've converted uh, most of my precious metal investments to uh, vaulted, secured, stored metals. And the site that I actually use to, to do that is called the Hard Assets Alliance. I'll do a, a video where I review their site and kind of what they do. I've been very happy with them. I like the fact that by using their service, I can buy gold and silver. I can have it stored in different locations throughout the world. And then I don't need to worry about the risk of it being stolen or being lost in a fire. I don't need to deal with the security risk associated with it. Um, it has a lot of benefits and it's highly liquid. I don't need to go try to sell it at a local coin shop or a point, uh, pawn shop. All I need to do is I just go log into the interface and say, I want to I want to sell this. And within a couple of days, I've got you know the money that the value of that um, um, you know, gold or silver back in my bank account. So it's highly liquid, it's very easily to convert. I don't run into the issues where I've you know, got potential security risks, um, you know, selling it to a local coin shop, and it's just kind of a hassle trying to sell stuff you know, to some of the big bullion dealers when you gotta mail it in, you gotta register you know, your package, you, got, you wanna insure it as well. So I like Hard Assets Alliance for that reason. Um, so the, there are a lot of different ways you can get involved in gold. There are a couple ETFs that you can buy, uh, you know, through your brokerage account. Um, a lot of people don't like them for different reasons, but I'll, I'll do a separate video on ETFs. There are a couple that I really like. They also make it very easy to buy and sell um, uh, precious metals, or at least their derivative products in the form of an ETF. Uh, which is really liquid. It's uh, that's one of the things I like about the ETFs. It's highly liquid. You can easily buy and sell. Um, I like the Hard Asset Alliance just because it is also fairly liquid. It's not quite as liquid as the the ETFs, but it's a good option. I really do think that it is in everyone's best interest to consider uh, putting some gold in their overall investment portfolio, just as like a like I said, like a secure store of wealth. Um, or, you know, for um, you know, for their 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 future, for their family's you know, uh, financial protection in the long run. Now, I wouldn't put a whole lot in there. I think I've I've heard experts you know recommend that everyone, uh, you know, in in their opinions, everyone they think they should have you know between three and five percent of gold you know as a total allocation within their investment portfolio. Some people will say it should be even higher, about 10%. I usually, for myself, 
I usually allocate about um, seven to ten percent of my overall investments in you know I put that into precious metals. So about seven to ten percent of my total available income for investments goes into precious metals, and I split it between silver and gold primarily. Um, usually favoring gold, although I've kind of switched over to silver right now with the just the price ratio. Um, you know where things are at with silver. I think silver is a really, really good buy. So anyway, I just want to give you a quick update on on this issue because whenever I see um, countries repatriating their gold, it always is a little alarm bell in my head that says, "Hey, what's going on? What do they know that I don't? And what does this bode for the global economy, potentially the economy in the in the U.S. Because we're all connected. When when one country has an issue, especially you know, a country like Russia, China, or any country in the EU, um, that is going to affect the economy of the United States. And as you know, when something goes wrong with the economy here, it is going to affect each and every one of our lives in some form or fashion. So I, l I always look at this and I go, okay, what's happening? This is this is an important, important um issue to uh, to be aware of i wanted to point out someone's channel that uh, if you haven't subscribed if you aren't familiar with them i i really encourage you to subscribe to mike maloney's youtube channel he's got a lot of great insights he covers precious metals he covers uh the economy uh the monetary system the money supply he's a very very smart guy i really respect his opinion um he's got a great uh, video series that he put out called The Hidden Secrets of Money, which I would definitely recommend for everyone to get yourself up to speed as to what money really is, how it affects the economy, and what effects do uh, the Federal Reserve and government policies have on the mon monetary supply, and what does that mean for each of us as an individual um, who's trying to save money, or what does it mean for the economy for all of us who are employed or all of us who are investors. So definitely check out Mike's uh, channel on YouTube. A lot of great stuff there. I'd highly recommend that. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys for uh, listening. I really appreciate it. Um, and I just want, again, to wish you all a very happy, very safe Thanksgiving. It's a great time of year just to remind ourselves again, as I mentioned, to be thankful for everything that we have in life, our, our relationships, you know, our, our, our jobs, every, uh, everything that we have in our life. It's, we, we really are so fortunate in our world today with what we have that we just we can't take that for granted. All right. I wish you guys all the best. I will, uh, I'll, I'll see you guys later in the next video. Until I do, hope you have all the best success in everything you're trying to do. Good luck, guys. Take care.